Hello, I thought I'd do a bit of a talk about general medicine or internal medicine and sort of how the processes kind of work in, in New Zealand. Um, so I guess to start off, um, what we sort of do as doctors is solve medical problems, right? Um, if someone's unwell, you need to know well, what the problem is. Do we need to do any tests or anything else to make sure we know for sure what the problem is um, or to help guide our treatment and then to treat them and once people get better we will try and send them home um, that's the kind of ins and outs of the uh, the job um, I used to well I remember uh, when I was a surgical um, house officer it was quite evident what the surgical registrars and consultants did or well, they did surgery and if you have a structural problem, you need a structural solution. And surgeons, of course, provide that, those structural solutions. And then when I went and became a general medicine house officer, um, I was like, hmm, well, what, what, do, um, what does the general medicine registrar do? So I asked my registrar, I said, well, so, you know, surgeons go and do surgery. What do you do when you finish the ward round? And he says, well, you know what? <laughs> I go and see patients. That's what I do. Um, so let's sort of uh, um, have a bit of a go into what um, we do in internal medicine. So I guess we can start with the ward. You sort of imagine that you kind of have a ward and there's a bunch of beds on the ward. The kind of idea is you also have an emergency department. I guess you've also got GPs. So if you've got patients who are unwell, um, they might go and see their, their GP. The GP reckons, well, I can't fix the problem. They kind of need, you know, a bit more of a workup in the hospital, maybe an inpatient stay um, to get better. And so they'll refer in to be seen. Um, and it's often the medical registrar who will see them, uh, do, you know, take a history, examine them, decide what further tests they might need, blood tests, ECGs, chest x-rays or other tests, and then bring them in uh, for admission. Um, the other kind of way patients might end up is if they're really sick and um, they might have come into ED via, you know, by ambulance, or maybe they self-presented, you know, waiting in the waiting room, get seen by an ED doctor who reckons, well, you know, you probably need a bit of time in hospital to get better and the medical doctors are the one to fix the problems not not the surgeons because it's not a structural problem um, so they refer to medicine and then they also get admitted to the ward and you know so what they might get admitted in the daytime or in the evening or overnight and the very next day um, they'll get seen on the post-acute ward round or can post-acute consultant ward round um, ins and outs is you've got sort of patients in, in beds um, and hopefully they've already had some treatment started maybe they've got an infection like cellulitis which is an infection of the skin and soft tissues um, and they might have already been started on some antibiotics um, you know three times a day every eight hours um, and they're sort of you know, parked on the on on the ward, getting treatment through a drip in the, in a vein, and the nurses are the ones giving the medications. Um, the nurses are also the ones who are sort of well caring for the patients. You know, if they are unable to shower themselves or unable to feed themselves, our nurses and our healthcare assistants are the ones who are providing that sort of care whilst they're on the ward. Um, and the nurses will do observations, which are where they come round and they'll keep eyes on the patient, they'll check their blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, take their temperature, make sure they're not in pain, make sure they're at a proper level of consciousness. And if, and if they're worried, they'll um, escalate to an on-call doctor. And for the most part, these are house officers. Um, or interns or house surgeons um, and the thing is um, if you think about it uh, the house really is the ward so the house officers sort of manage the ward and um, say someone's become more unwell the house officer might 
come by because the nurse asked them to, they'll page the house officer and come by, check up on the patient and make sure that they're all right. And if, and if they seem to be really unwell and they feel that oh, we're out of our depth, they'll escalate to the registrar on call. The registrar is usually a third or third year or higher um, after graduation as a postgraduate um, year three or higher doctor. Um, because they're just more knowledge and more experience to come by and review the patient um, to try and see well what's going on do they need further tests do they need, do they need a change to their to their treatment perhaps and the house officers generally a postgraduate year one or two um, so that's sort of the the ins and outs going back a little bit um, so you know patients come in overnight and then the next day maybe at 9 a.m you know we've got the round and uh, the boss and the team, so let's, let's sort of draw the, you know, we've got the boss here, and then the uh, registrar here, and you know, house officer here, and uh, maybe a little med student here. Um, they're coming around and they're seeing all the patients, one, two, three, four, five, you know. Um, and then basically they're taking a history, they're doing examination, uh, checking up on the tests and saying, well, hmm, okay, are you better? Um, have we gotten you better? can you go home if not we'll need to do some other things to fix your problems um, so that's kind of the ins and outs and once we've got a plan well then you know, the question is what what's in the plan right if it's things like giving medicines or maybe you need some physiotherapy input uh, to get them mobilizing again uh, maybe they need some extra equipment to help them with that uh, because they they might need it temporarily um, just to get back on their feet um, Thing, things like that and, and sometimes of course the doctors also need to do procedures or, or other things that are you know that nurses or healthcare assistants or you know physio and occupational therapists and speech language therapists um, can't quite do uh, for example like a lumbar puncture for example uh, or spinal tap where the, we're taking fluid from from the spine that's something that's often a registrar level job and then perhaps um, something like maybe, you know, this patient has gone into urinary retention. They can't pass urine and, well, they kind of need a structural solution. So a Foley catheter where you put, a, you know, essentially a, a tube, a bendy plastic tube um, from the outside in through the urethra to essentially provide a conduit for the fluid, you know, urine to go through. That's often a house officer job um, to do. Um, so just a few examples anyway. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, once patients improve and, um, you know, they're able to mobilize independently, they can you know, toilet themselves and, and feed themselves, make a hot drink. We say, well, you know, you definitely bed enough and you can cope at home. Uh, maybe sometimes people might need some, you know, if they had an infection, we say, okay, you've defervest. You've gotten better from that infection, and uh, we can stop the IV antibiotics. You don't need those anymore. We'll swap you to TABA antibiotics. You complete a further, you know, six, or five or six days, um, and then you know you can go home and pick up a script on your way home, um, and you know, we'll arrange follow up if required. And the thing is, um, when you leave hospital, well, here's the thing is. Um, uh, who's going to sort of check up to make sure you've recovered? Do you need to be checked up to make sure you're recovered? Um, for a lot of patients, that's with their GP, general practitioner, uh, or their primary care physician out in the community, uh, who acts as a sort of anchor for them, really. Uh, we might say, well, please you know, book in to see your GP in one to two weeks' time, uh, just to make sure that you're on the road to recovery. If the GP was worried that things weren't, uh, as great as they we were expecting, they might, you know, phone back in um, to the medical registrar and call and say, "Well, hey, look, um, I know you discharged this patient, but look, uh, they they haven't actually gotten, uh, or they're not really coping at home, and they might need to be readmitted um, to have those problems solved." Um, the ins and outs really is, you know, I'm going to jump back a little bit again. So we've done the post acute ward round, and. Um, you know, the registered med and medical register will leave and they might go to even, you know, a clinic. Um, so clinic setting, um, it's supposed to be computer and keyboard <laughs> and a patient uh, examination couch here. 
um, well, when the registrars are off the wards, and who's looking after the wards, right? Who's looking after the house? Uh, that's the house officers. And, um, and for the most part, um, they're able to look after it quite well. And when they need our help, they'll let us know, call us up, and we can go from where we were and, and um, go and help them out. Ins and outs is there's sort of a three-tier system. We've got um, essentially a SMO, a senior medical officer, like a boss or consultant. Um, and then between them, you've got the registrar. You could consider them almost like a senior resident um, in other countries. And then you've got the house officer. So it's sort of a, th a three-level system. Um, with three different levels of experience and knowledge. Um, house officers, like I say, only, you know, PGY, postgraduate year one or two. They're just, just starting in their career. Um, still a lot to learn, still a lot of experience to be gained, and um, definitely in training. You've got a registrar who's um, someone who, uh, you know, is, is already, they've, they've pretty much set their training path in motion. They know they want to go into internal medicine or become a, uh, or keep their training and eventually end up in a subspecialty in medicine. Um, and, you know, these, these often PGY uh, three all the way to eight, nine, ten even. Um, and then senior medical officers or, you know, consultants, they, they've finished their fellowship with the, with the college. Um, essentially, they've finished training and are can practice fully independently and they are of course supervising the registrar and the house officer and the registrar supervises the house officer and then maybe well here we've got the medical students um, and you know all four will supervise the medical students because eventually um, after the med students finish school um, well they will step up to become house officers and we want them to be good house officers to look after our patients um, that was a bit of a ramble about um, general medicine or internal medicine and how it's sort of practiced in, in New Zealand. I think it's quite similar to how it's practiced in Australia and, and the UK as well. This is sort of how it works. I hope that was interesting.